Hey, Hawk fans, another week and another edition of Inside the Hawks, our weekly podcast that focuses in on all things SJU athletics. I'm Matt Martucci, and once again, we bring you another Catching Up segment. A few weeks ago, Joe Lenardi caught up with Chet Stachitis in his Catching Up segment, and of course, Chet engaged and doing very well. We had another chance, though, this week to visit with another former Hawk, John Bryant, on campus to rehab an injury suffered in the D-League and try and get himself back out to Bakersfield, California, where he currently plays for the Bakersfield Jam. He was on campus to rehab and stopped by the set of Phil Martelli's Hawk Talk TV show. So I had the chance to sit down with John, talk about life in the D-League, his career at St. Joseph's, and his plans for the next few months. There's some wedding bells in his future. So without further ado, here's my interview with John Bryant from a few days ago right here on Inside the Hawks. Another week, another edition of Inside the Hawks and our catching up segment. This time, it's former Hawk forward John Bryant, an integral part of the Perfect Season team as well as the NIT runner-up team. I guess, uh, first off, tell everybody what brought you back to campus. You're you're nursing a little bit of an injury, huh? Yeah, I was playing for a a developmental league team in Bakersfield, California, and I tweaked my bat a bit. So I came back to um, rehab, do a little rehab with uh, Bill Lukaswicz, and his wife, Amy, um, just to get me ready to go and ready to back, be back playing in, in Bakersfield. I know, uh, obviously, this place has a, a special meaning for you. Otherwise, you wouldn't, wouldn't come back to, to rehab with somebody familiar. When you think about it, what does St. Joe's mean to you? I mean, it's just, it's just my life, you know, right now. My whole life is intertwined. I, I met my future wife, my fiance, uh, here on campus. Um, I've made so many friends. Uh, and the coach has just been a, a great inspiration for me um, throughout the years. It's just, I don't know, it's just family. It, it, sum it up, sum it up all in one, in one word. We're catching up with John Bryant here on Inside the Hawks. What are your best memories uh, from especially your last two years? Obviously uh, that perfect season team and then uh, finishing as the NIT runner-up as a senior. I mean, <laughs> my, my best memories are just being off the court with the guys um, we had a lot of different characters. I wish people would see, you know, behind the scenes, you know what I mean, just the, the laughs that we had and the characters that we had on that team. Like, if there was a video camera with us 24-7, like, it'd be the, the most watched reality TV show, I mean, ever. Um, but, I mean, on the court stuff speaks for itself. Um, and everybody can reflect and, and think about that, but... I think the different types of people that we had coming together for one main goal was basically my, my the best memory. Who was the biggest clown on that team? I mean, if you had to pick one, I mean, uh, just Rob is just a character. Um, I don't know if Rob Harshorn. I mean, it, if anybody looked down at the bench, he was never in a chair. He was always on his knees. I mean, he was always just energizing the team. Um, just somebody that maybe didn't get as much playing time, but he was the heart and soul of our team. John Bryant with us here on Inside the Hawks. You're an interesting story, obviously. Uh, I didn't really know this. Phil Martelli had talked about this, that late in your senior year of high school, you were set to go Division Two. And uh, describe what happened to get you here to St. Joseph's. I mean, it was just one of those things where my family and I just really prayed on it, and uh, God just came through and I went to a senior showcase, and Coach Bass came down to watch watch it, and um, I just I knew something bigger was out there, and I just went and played as hard as I could, and he saw something in me, and I'm so grateful. I mean, I landed here, and in my, in my thoughts, in my mind, the best university I could have ever gone to. Um, it just was perfect. You're a guy that uh, has always kind of been known as a, a lunch pail guy. You do what do what you're supposed to do, do your job. You don't worry about how many points you're scoring, how many rebounds you're grabbing. You're just a team guy. Where did that mentality come from? Who who passed that on to you? It seems like that's almost a, that's an innate trait. That's almost like an inboard trait. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it, that it comes from my, my father. Um, he told me, with everything I do, do it 100% and hustle always. And just give your best effort. I mean, don't get me wrong. He, he of course, wants me to score. And it always tells me, you need to shoot more. But, <laughs> I mean, this is who I am. This is my identity. I, I do whatever it takes to win. And I love being me, doing my role. I love being that guy. Um, 
So, I mean, I, I have no regrets, and I played with 100% effort every time I stepped on foot on the court. You're heading back to Bakersfield this Friday. You've been now uh, playing pro ball for a little while in Europe and now in the D League. What's the biggest difference you see uh, from the college to the pro game? I know you don't watch that much college basketball anymore, number one, but uh, what, what's the biggest difference that you see? I mean, um, I want to say here, uh, the NBA is just just quick hitters. They hit, which is a very quick game, and, and everyone is really good. <laughs> I mean... it's <laughs> a good way to describe yeah, it. You know, I mean, uh, it's just people think that it's all fun. And, I mean, it's, people don't understand how good these players are. And, and I see it in the D League, but and there's 50 games in the D League, but you're playing 82, play, 82 games in the NBA against the best player, you know what I mean? The best players in the world, you know, arguably. And just, there might be one night where you play, like, a bad team or whatever, but you're playing against Blake Griffin, you know what I mean? So it's just one of those things where you never take it for granted. It's just, in Europe, it's just methodical, and it's just, it's a tougher game, but it's just, it's 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 a much more physical game, up-tempo game. You ended up shedding some light uh, for me the other day because I'm I'm one of those guys that's always criticizing the NBA and saying there's no defense. But uh, you were telling me the other day that the biggest thing I took away from our conversation is the level of play is just so high that it's not necessarily that people don't play defense. It's more a matter of everybody can score. Uh, yeah, it's just it's one of those things where you're playing against a guard who in college was the best guard in his conference or whatever or whatever it's just it's any person can go and score on their opponent at any given time and it's not that the one-on-one defense may be bad it's just that the offense is so good I think that's what is important and the team defense is is basically the key now what's next for you? Uh, obviously going back to the D League, but what do you have uh, for the off season? And uh, I know I know you've got some plans, some, yeah. some things going on in the next few months. You can uh, share that with us. Yeah, um, uh, going back to Bakersfield, finish up the season, uh, and then I'm getting married to my beautiful fiance Allison, who I met here on campus um, in August. Uh, wedding crashers are welcome. <laughs> No, I'm just, but uh, <laughs> um, we're getting married in the area. That's where she's from. And so uh, it's just a new chapter in my life, beginning a new chapter. And I just, I'm so excited. No wedding crashers, but maybe uh, we can get some people to send you some gifts. Where are you registered? Oh, man. Yeah, please. <laughs> she's, Macy's, she's taking care of that, right? Yeah, Macy's, Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh, man. Just, and Best Buy, actually. Target. Come on, look that us big, up. That big, yeah. screen, that big screen TV is so going TV, on sale. Come on. Come on, Hawks out there. I, I, I uh, blood, sweat, and tear for you guys. I'm just joking. But, you know, unless you're going to do it, I mean, uh, they're welcome. <laughs> All right, John. We uh, appreciate the time here on Inside the Hawks. Wish you the best of luck, and uh, we hope to see you in the NBA real soon. I mean, thank you so much for the time, and I appreciate it. Thank you. John Bryant with us here on Inside the Hawks. Just uh, one more that has come through the fold and been successful. Wish him the best of luck, and we will take a break. When we come back, we'll wrap up this week's podcast. You're listening to Inside the Hawks on St. Joseph's All Access. Once again, thanks to John Bryant for stopping by Inside the Hawks. Of course, you can catch John in the NBA's developmental league, or the D League as it's known, with the Bakersfield Jam. John Bryant, a guy who really defined the word tough, tough personified for the former Hawk. Again, we thank him, and Hawks could certainly use a guy like John Bryant this season. It's been a tough road now for Phil Martelli and SJU, as the Hawks now 0-6 in Atlantic 10 play for the first time in the history of the program, and 5-15 overall, 0-3 in the Big 5 after a tough loss to LaSalle the other night, 76 to 72. Hawks ended up falling by four points. On the women's side of things, Cindy Griffin and the Hawks now 12 and 8 and 2 and 4 in the Atlantic 10 after falling to St. Bonaventure the other night where the Hawks shot just 35% from the floor. They get back on the floor this Saturday at Dayton at 2 o'clock p.m. And of course, uh, on the men's side of things, SJU will take on Temple at the Palestra. A little early morning start, 11 a.m. is the start of the Hawks and the Owls on the St. Joseph Sports Network. Joe Lenardi and I will have your coverage. Uh, about 15 minutes or so beforehand. And, of course, we will catch you up with men's and women's basketball next week. Cindy Griffin will stop by once again for our bi-weekly sit-down. Hopefully uh, both the Hawks on the men's and women's side can uh, get a few more wins before we talk to you again next week. Once again, for Inside the Hawks, my name is Matt Martucci. We will catch you next week, Hawk fans.
This has been a presentation of St. Joseph's All Access.